Today's podcast, ooh, today's podcast is brought to you by our friends over at Smart Deploy. IT tools to manage your computers easier, faster. Head on over to smartdeploy.com slash FRD. Find links in descriptions or Paul there in Mexico for a brief moment of time. Yeah, if everything goes well, we'll be out of here in about three and a half hours. Three and a half hours until... Feels up. Until I got to pay off the TSA, <laughs> not, or not the border control, I guess. <laughs> I think we have everything we need. Uh, <clears throat> we'll see. Yeah. We'll move slowly down here for sure. Yeah. Fun things have happened, Paul. I know mm -hmm. since we've, we've chatted last, I mean, 24 hours ago, the, the one app we've all been waiting for to be updated, and we're not <laughs> talking Paint 3D. Microsoft is going to update the paints. Yeah. <clears throat> I actually like this one. Um, I like Paint as it is. Mm-hmm. Um, this is paint as it is, just a visual refresh. Um, and I, you know, it's going to, obviously it's going to support some kind of weed and UI based, uh, light mm -hmm. and dark mode, and presumably windows 11 themes, I guess, but, uh, whatever. I think it, it looks good. Yeah. I mean, this is sort of what they've done. Snipping tool. They've now done paint. Yeah. What else? Yeah. Done? I mean, literally based on the video and I, I kind of stepped through paint on mm -hmm. my computer to make sure, I mean, it's exactly the same all the same commands in the in the ribbon that you can see. Yep. Um, they didn't show up any new functionality. Oh. Um, great. That's fine. I, I, there's nothing wrong with paint. Yeah. They also well, except for that it's stuck in light mode, I guess. You know, it's a, the current version is just a Win32 app. But yeah. Yeah. Good. Good, yeah, good, we good. All... This is what I wanted. You know? Windows 11 was Paul Thratt's idea. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it was, you know, when yeah. you see Windows 11 and then you see they introduced... A dark mode and then you see that all of the win ui i'm sorry win, win 32 uis don't carry over and you get into weird situations like file manager supports dark mode but the dialogues that it creates don't you know mm -hmm. that kind of thing it's like you know clearly there's a better way of doing this and i don't know if that required new you know win ui slash whatever technologies but it's good i mean this is this is kind of addressing at least some of the inconsistencies we've been complaining about for the past you know, whatever, three to five years, however you want to measure it. Yeah. Yeah. So as we all cross our fingers and wait to see what they do to Notepad. Yes. And then, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was just discussing that with somebody on Twitter. Like, um, hopefully, I, I, hopefully they don't do too much to Notepad. Right. I mean, Notepad is such a minimalist app. Um, if they just kind of refresh the, U, it's a, just a menu with a box, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not against them changing that. I, I, I think I would be okay with a minimalist uh, toolbar, perhaps with a toggle in the view menu to turn it off. If you don't they want could it. do the absolute minimum like they did with calendar and mail and just round the corners round the and just corners. call it a day. Well, that's what it is now. But actually, I'd like to see it support dark mode, you know, the way that yeah. Word does when you can have dark mode like in the document. Mm -hmm. Because that, you know, otherwise Notepad is like this flashlight in the middle of your screen, right? So that kind of thing would be nice. I mean, I, I don't see why not i hope they build in microsoft editor and just make everyone angry boy actually yeah, honestly for that that would almost make it usable as a as a an word replacement for someone but... writing yeah 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 which is probably why they won't do it yeah and which is why mm. you know what i want to do yeah. um so i had something weird happen to my house yesterday paul throughout mm -hmm. very odd so we were home from school. It was like almost like three thirty-five on the dot. Mm -hmm. All of my Nest cams, my Nest thermostat goes offline, and I'm like, <clears throat> "What?" The? So first, I assumed like the Nest service went down, like, right? Because well, I mean, it's all the Nest and stuff, I right? It's didn't all... hear about that, so I'm guessing that isn't what happened. And it's not what happened yeah. for reasons I cannot understand and or explain. So I have the Amplify HD and there's a, a central like router and then there's a bunch of mesh points that connect to it. The yep. central router stayed online, but every single mesh point got disconnected at the exact same time, all of them, which replicates obviously my network. So anything near the edges just completely right. dropped off, which are the cameras on the house. And then my thermostat sort of in a weird spot. Yeah. And yeah, just sort of like, what the hell happened? Um, mm. Could but have. since it's all of them, I assume it was triggered by the router, right? Or at the router. Or Something happened. I cannot explain <laughs> it. I restarted the router. It came right back online. But I mean, I've had this system for four years, something like that. Three, four years. Never once had an issue with it until yesterday. 
I saw, I don't remember when this was. It doesn't matter. But sometime right in the middle of this trip, I got a an alert in the middle of the night that I didn't see until the morning that my Wi-Fi network was down, and then it was back up like 33 minutes later. And I looked at the weather, and I mm. think it was caused by some kind of a lightning, mm. oh, you no. know, storm thing or something. Yeah. But it, maybe the power went out completely or something, and uh, that was what it was. But oh, I, I guess the power went out completely. It probably makes a little bit more sense than your house <laughs> getting struck by lightning and then. Oh you know, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to suggest it got struck by right. I, I meant it lightning. Yeah, I guess it would be the power uh, probably went down briefly. It's I don't even know if I would have noticed it if I was at home, other than the fact that it would would have been storming outside. Maybe it would have been obvious, but yeah. Well, <clears throat> lightning doesn't have to strike twice. That sounded so much better in my head. To take advantage mm -hmm. of this offer from our friends over at Smart Deploy. The modern workplace <laughs> requires modern IT tools. When legacy solutions like Ghost, MDT, and Acronis Snap Deploy no longer fit the bill, try Smart Deploy's modern endpoint management solutions. Head on over to smartdeploy.com slash FRD to get started with your free exclusive software worth over $570. Or you could you could head on over there, or you could also download the new Windows 10 build, if that's what's been keeping. Well, you. Uh, I wouldn't say can. Well, might be able. To. Yeah, <laughs> it's such a weird set of circumstances. Um, I, I, let me see if I can get through this correctly, because if you have a computer that does not meet the requirements for Windows 11, the hardware requirements, mm -hmm. you can join now the Windows Insider program in the beta or dev channel and get windows 11 and there'll be a little warning it'll say hey by the way you know when this thing ships you're probably not gonna be able to get it but uh, they're gonna let you test it for now if you were already in the release preview which I, i'm not even gonna try to explain where it was because i don't understand <laughs> where it was but I, you were basically testing updates to windows 10 21 h1 i believe and that computer doesn't meet the hardware requirements for windows 11 you can now get windows 10 21 h2 uh, in pre-release form and it's the first bill. I don't know if it's the first build ever I don't think it's the first build ever, but it's the first build to include the three minor new features That Microsoft announced back in July, maybe That's not right. Nobody understands what you just said <laughs> Yeah, that, I mean, so it's it must, crazy. Then by the way, it must be correct. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because the, the requirements are yeah. bizarre Yeah, anyway, if you're in that sad little subgroup um, like, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, how big could enjoy. that group be? I, that, no, I know. I don't know. Well, I feel like, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the Windows Insider program is pretty big. I mean, the active group is pretty small, relatively. Um, I bet that the group of just overall PC users that out in the world, I, I, I bet it's close to 40 or even higher percent, don't meet technically the system requirements for Windows 11 today. So, I don't know, 17, 18 people? I, I don't know. It, it's like, not a big group. Yeah. Because I feel, I feel like if you're on the insider program, you, you're there for like the bleeding edge. Most people, because why? I would think so. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, why else would you? What's the appeal? I just want the app updates, you know. Yeah. Or, or, you know, or, geez, you don't even have to be in the insider program to get preview versions of updates. I right. Mean, I wonder if there's a chart inside the world of Microsoft that shows how many different insider programs and how many different paths there are to being part of like pre-release stuff. This froze for me there for about 20 seconds or more, but don't worry. Nobody, nobody noticed. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. It's interesting. I, um, I, I did windows weekly yesterday mm -hmm. and I did it from next to the router in the next room. And I did a test before the microphone sounded fine. I, my, my, the microphone I bought, by the way, is broken. Like it's, I, I did a test of it on teams mm -hmm. and got this gar. It was just garbled. And uh, so I'm going to, I'm exchanging it. I, they actually, I think the, the new one's going to arrive today at my house, but, um, just like, you. I, well, I need something to, you yeah. know, for traveling. I still need something to travel with. So, and obviously the thing that broke, I'm going to get another one of those cause I'm a genius. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, we started the show and, 60 over 60 uh, Wi-Fi next to the router and better on Wi-Fi but, or, or on uh, Ethernet, but whatever. And um, there were a couple little fallouts for me. I mean, no one kind of said anything. And I just unplugged the power and plugged in the Ethernet. And mm -hmm. it was perfect from then on. And maybe that's the trick here. <laughs> yeah. you, need a, you need a hardware in this, at least in this place. I don't know. Um, it's the first place I've had one. So, I mean, I, obviously I would always strive to use a... Um, oh, wait a minute. Actually... It's possible I used a wire one time with you in San Miguel. 
now that I think of it. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, connectivity has been a problem. Let's just put it that way. No, well, apparently it's also a connectivity is a problem at home too, as you have now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, when it works, it's good. Yeah. I, you know, like, so. I guess that's Anyways, you're heading home today. Do you yep. direct flight? Or you got... Yep. yep. That's direct good. Flight. What time do you, what time do you think you'll be strolling through the front door? If all goes well. Uh, six, six 30. Oh, that's not terrible. Yeah. No, this is a big difference from Europe. You know, yeah. uh, when you fly in from Europe, it's during the day, but when you fly mm -hmm. there, it's at night, which is terrible, but it's a longer flight uh, from Europe, obviously, no matter where you're coming from. And, um, how long of a flight is it? It's four and a half hours, maybe that's, 445. I mean, that's a, that's a healthy flight, but it's not, I mean, that's I know, I know. like, no, it's, it's the difference between being a, you know, feeling like a human the next day and or feeling like a. Yeah, just a washed up zombie. I mean, that's something. rough. Roughly, it's a little bit longer than my flight from Cincinnati direct to Seattle. Yeah, right. Right. Or San Francisco, for that matter. Yeah, from Boston, it, I feel like flights edged up over time. Like they used to be shorter. I'm convinced of this, but <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think they're doing it for fuel savings, and maybe there's mm -hmm. more planes in the sky. Obviously, there are more planes in the sky. I don't know, but but um, yeah, my from Boston, it used to be it, it, it was edging up to six hours. You know, from Boston to get to Seattle. Yeah. And, uh, and that's why we started going to Europe. I, I, I was used to go to Seattle so much, uh, back when you had to do everything in person and, mm -hmm. uh, they would just do it there. And I, you know, I sort of said, well, we're, we're, I'm spending so much time in the air. Is there someplace fun I could go? And you kind of do one of those circle things. You're like, <laughs> you just go in the opposite direction. You're like, yeah, I could go to Ireland or England or yeah. France. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Well, we wish you safe travels on the, yeah, sure. uh, on the way home. And uh, for everybody else, make sure to check out Smart Deploy, the first and only to offer Windows deployments from the cloud. You can head on over to smartdeploy.com slash FRD for a free offer worth $570. And we'll catch all of you right back here stateside tomorrow. Hopefully. <clears throat> yeah, exactly.